What's up guys, it's Cody and this is another UFC betting breakdown, this time for UFC 294. And if you're living under a rock and you haven't seen the news, we got some big changes to the top of the card. But before we get into it, if you saw last video, just last week, I gave away a copy of UFC 5. Um, comes out in just a couple, well less than two weeks. I'm giving away 10 copies total. Just gave away a copy last week. Giving away several more over the next couple weeks. So... Congratulations to Monkey God. Um, out of like 120 entries, Monkey God won. So congrats to you. I'm glad it went to somebody who I know is going to put thousands of hours into the game. But for this week, just like last week, if you want to get in on the giveaway, here's what you need to do. Leave a like on the video. Click subscribe. Click the bell and turn those post notifications on. And just like last week, I want you to put in the comments below how many significant strikes you think are going to be landed in total, not just by the winner, in total from both fighters in the main event. You have Islam Makhachev defending his lightweight title against the featherweight champion coming up for a double a chance at double champ status. Alex Volkanovsky coming in on 12 days notice looking for Islam's belt. How many significant strikes do you think are going to be landed in that main event? Write that in the comments below. I appreciate you. Good luck. Like I said, giving away nine more copies, so good luck to you. And uh, let's see who wins. Now let's get into the card. Below that main event, we have Kamaru Usman stepping in as well on short notice. Paulo Costa forced to pull out as well as Charles Oliveira. And now we got Kamaru Usman stepping in. Um, Going to be a banger of a fight. Cannot wait. We will get into it soon. But all that out of the way, man, let's get into the first fight of the night. First up, we got Bruno Silva taking on Shara, and I've been seeing he wants to just go by Shara Magomedov, but Shara Butin Magomedov. Um, been hearing about this guy for like two years, I feel like. Finally coming in. Um, this should not be the first fight of the night, and I don't think it will be. I don't know why Tapology has it this way. I'm sure this will be changed, but we'll go off tap we'll go off Tapology. Um, this is a banger of a fight. I mean, this should be like first fight in the main card, honestly. I mean, um, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but like, hold on. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm cool with that. Uh, they're building Makayev. This should be like the featured prelim over Bajra, honestly. This is a banger of a fight. Magomedov, I mean, big prospect. Obviously, he has uh, the very unique look, dude, uh, the unique, or the, you know, the last name that draws some eyeballs, but um, one eye, okay. Um, somebody saw some viral videos of him getting in some street fights. Um, he's coming in as a big favorite. He's 11 and 0. I, I really wanted to go through the tape and see. Okay, is this warranted? Because Bruno Silva's a tough guy. I gotta say, Bruno Silva, good striking, big power, it's a mixed bag in the UFC. His 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 Achilles heel is that submission defense. He does uh, find himself in a lot of submissions. Um, Magomedov, solid grappler. More of a ground and pound guy. Got, got the grappling, though, overall. I do think he can take Bruno down. Uh, Bruno is a big, strong guy, but Magomedov probably going to have a bit of a strength advantage, a, a bit of a wrestling, grappling advantage. I do think he can get him down. I think he can ground and pound him. I also think on the feet, it's going to be close. But this is a big step up. Uh, at least, well, I won't say big step up. Magomedov took on some pretty decent um, opponents here at, at RCC and uh, Arena and... Uh, some some tough uh you know competition on the regional scene but uh Bruno Silva obviously has the UFC experience under the bright lights um you know he is a big power striker and you know you got to think I'm sorry but you got to think physically Magomedov I mean one eye I mean yeah people are going to say Michael Bisping but I'm just saying that is a bit of a disadvantage I'm sorry it is you, you know it's the ones you don't see coming that get you um so we're going to see. Bruno Silva could definitely catch him, could put him out, but I got to go with the more complete fighter. I'm actually surprised it's not a bigger favorite just because there is a lot of hype on this guy. Um, I do think it's warranted, though. I think Magomedov is going to get it done. This better not be the first fight of the night. If so, I mean, hey, they're going to wake people up since this is an early morning card. Reminder, this card starts at like 10 a.m., so be ready for that um, Eastern time. But I will go Magomedov. I'm going to say he gets him down and lands the ground and pound. I'm going to say Magomedov, TKO second round. Let's move into the next fight of the night, which I actually think this is going to be the first fight of the night. We got Jin Yu Fry taking on Victoria Dudakova. Um, Dudakova came in on her um, debut against Estella Nunes. Kind of um, 
disappointing seeing Nunez get injured. It was pretty gruesome. First, like, 30 seconds, right over 30 seconds. Uh, Victoria Dudikova, undefeated. Um, she's pretty big for the weight class. Pretty good everywhere. Um, solid wrestling, solid grappling. Striking's pretty solid. Um, obviously, only 24. She's 14 years younger than Jenny Fry. Jenny Fry, experienced. Gonna have that UFC um, experience, of course. But coming off three losses, you know, Elise Reed, Pollyanna Viana, Vanessa Dumopoulos, um, not the best losses. Even Loma Lupunme um, getting submitted by Kay Hansen. Not a great look. I will say Kay, or I mean, Jinyu Fry, solid striker. I think Dudakova can get her down. I think Dudakova can compete on the feet. It's really just the experience and the lack of solid competition. I mean, Victoria's fighting low-level girls in the regional scene. They're clearly building this girl. They're clearly trying to find a girl that they think that, you know, she's Russian. They're, I mean, they're in Abu Dhabi. I'm not saying. Everybody's like, oh, that's not Russia, bro. It's like, okay, there's still the big connections. Come on, stop. Who are we kidding here? Um, they're clearly trying to build Dudikova. That's why they're bringing, bringing Junior Fry in. I think she will send Fry her walking papers. But am I trying to lay almost 4-1 to one on Dudikova? Of course not. Uh, haven't had the courage to bet Jinyu Fry yet, but I saw her at plus 400. I'm a little bit tempted. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I get it. She's 38. She's small for the weight class. She doesn't have great takedown defense. Her gas tank is not great. I do think, um, you know, Victoria has the advantages everywhere, but she, Frey has the experience. She's training at Fortis MMA. Frey MMA as well. She got some good training partners. Um, I do think, you know, I wouldn't be shocked. And 4-1 to one, um, in her real first fight in the UFC. I mean, the last one was so odd you know ended the way it did um i'm obviously gonna go victoria dudikova i'm gonna take her by decision Jenny fry pretty tough but i do think uh i think fry is always live man i think Frey by decision not fry Frey by decision is live i'm gonna look at it i'm gonna look at plus 400 straight i'm seeing it at like plus 380 plus 400 on some books still right now but i'm gonna go dudikova overall let's move on to the next fight next up we got nathaniel wood taking on muhammad naimov um when I first saw this, you know, I thought, uh, oh, this is an easy, you know, parlay piece. But I, I will say, I looked through the tape for Naimov. This guy's pretty solid. I mean, big power, um, trained over at Elevation Fight Team. Um, some solid guys over there, obviously. Um, knocked out Jamie Malarkey as a big underdog. He's got big power. He's definitely willing to throw him. He's willing to take a shot if he has to. Nathaniel Wood, though, um, man, he's been looking good up at 145. Charles Rosa, okay, that was a tailor-made uh, fight. But Charles Jordan is that winning that fight was big. Yeah, he got rocked a couple times, but he uh, was able to get it done. Mix in some takedowns against these guys at 145. Even though he's smaller, his striking solid, but he can mix in the takedowns. He's got good leg kicks, good kicks in general, good boxing. Um, the big problem with Nathaniel Wood is he does get clipped. He does get hit. We've seen it in his last couple fights. He's been getting hit. He's been getting rocked. Um, seeing him at three to one, it can lay you, make you a little uneasy because we know this guy does get hit. This guy doesn't seem like the most durable guy of all time. He's got the heart to fight through it, but when he does eat these shots in the chin, he does tend to tend to uh, you know show it a little bit. Um, can Naimov come in and pull off another back to back uh, upset or you know be yeah, a big underdog upset? It's possible. I think Naimov could catch him, could clip him. He's gonna have some size. Um, not a whole lot of reach, but some height and some overall size. He's a he fought at 155, um, and coming down in weight. Woods coming up, so yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of a size difference probably. But I think Nathaniel Wood overall can mix in, use his volume, mix in a couple takedowns, avoid the big shot, and as long as he doesn't get knocked out, I think this skill for skill he matches up with Nine Mob very well. I'm gonna go to Nathaniel Wood. I'm gonna take him by decision. I'm gonna look at maybe a decision prop. Um, I think that would be the only way I'd be able to pay, play this. But so far, I haven't played it yet. It is only Monday. Um, lines are still coming out. So we was trying to find a decision prop for him, but it hasn't been released yet. I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. But next up, we got Anshul Jubilee taking on Mike Breeden. And uh, Jubilee coming in. Uh, seems like the UFC is kind of trying to build this guy coming out of India. Um, let's be real. They're bringing in Mike Breeden because they think who on the roster at the in the lightweight division can Jubilee be? We really need to get a guy in here from India. Um, you know, they're trying to branch out. And, I mean, this is an untapped market. Uh, I'm sure they're trying to find somebody in here that Jubilee can roll over. 
But I'm just not super impressed, and I cannot believe. I, I think it's four to one because people know he's being brought in to beat Mike Breeden. Mike Breeden, zero and three in the UFC. They really want to bring him in here to take a L. But I'm not super impressed. I mean, this Kung Pro Kim guy that he fought to a split decision. I mean, I get he's eleven and three. It wasn't a great fight, and I mean, the arm triangle a guy who's two and two just three fights ago. You know, five and four going to decision with him, and that wasn't the prettiest fight either. I got to watch that one. Another five and four guy a couple fights ago. I'm just not super impressed. I mean, he'll go out here, he'll mix and take down sometimes. His striking's okay, but I think he can take Breeden down, but I don't think he can hold him down. And I think Breeden's his takedown defense isn't great, but he does get up pretty decently. And I mean, I went back and watched a couple of his fights because you know when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, it's a lay down. But then I'm like, man, Jubilee minus four to one. What the hell? And I mean, yeah, Breeden's 0-3 in the UFC, but I mean, coming in to debut against Alexander Hernandez, who's always dangerous in that first round, and getting clipped by an overhand right, and getting knocked out in the first round by Terrence McKinney. Those are two dudes who can knock anybody out in that first round. And I mean, you go back and watch the Natan Levy fight, stats-wise, it looks like he got destroyed, but you you see, okay, yeah, he got taken down like six, seven times, but he was getting up every time. And in that third round, he started pouring it on, and it looked like... You know, he might have pulled off the upset. Um, I get it. He's 0-3. I get why everybody seems to be on Jubilee. I ain't laying minus 400 on a guy as unproven as Jubilee. I get it. He should win. Um, man, you know what? I was going to say I'm picking Jubilee. I'll, I'll, you know, betting-wise, that would be typically what I would say for something this wide. But you know what? Nope. I'm going to just drag my balls on the ground. And I'm picking Mike Breeden, plus 310, straight up. Um, I actually bet him um, just yesterday, plus 320. I saw some people got like plus 380. I missed that. But plus 320 yesterday, he's still like plus 310, plus I think maybe even plus 320 on some on some lines here, some books. Um, okay, about plus 310, plus 300. I think he's the... I mean, I just think stylistically, I think he's. He, I've seen more out of him. I get he's ten and six. This guy's seven and zero on paper. It's like they're they're bringing Breeden in to take that out. But I like Breeden in this matchup. I think he's gonna keep getting up, tire Jubilee out with the uh, with the um, the get ups and just making him work off his back. And I know I've literally not seen one person pick Breeden yet t- this week. I'm gonna be the one guy, and you guys can come. Laugh at me if I'm wrong, but I will take plus 310 underdog Mike Breeden. I think he can weather the, that early onslaught. I think Jubilee's going to come in hot, try to get that knockout. Could, may, could he catch him? Yes, but I'm going to say Mike Breeden is able to start you know, making him work with these takedowns, keep getting up, tire him out, and I'm going to say Jubilee goes down. Uh, I'm going to say Breeden. I'm actually I'm going to take him by decision, but I think... Uh, you know, a finish is possible if Jubilee slows down. I've seen him slow down in fights before. Obviously, he was able to win, but I'm going to take Mike Breeden. And you know what? The first dab of the video is going to Mike Breeden. Let's go war Breeden, baby. Let's go. We've been catching these underdogs. We're going to catch another one this week. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> Mike Breeden. <coughs> but... Next up, we got Cedric Dumas taking on Abu Azatar. Um, man, this fight is just, for me, I'm not going to lie, it's just a pass for me. I, I can't find an angle. I get it. Dumas, almost 10 years younger. Azatar coming in off a long layoff. Obviously, um, you know, Mark andre Barrio, that's a tough guy. A guy who had a ton of size on him. Was able to get him down, ground and pound him. I'm not going to look into that too much. It's the inactivity. And I don't know how, you know, how much is a Zaytar? I never can see, like, is this guy, like, taking the sports? Is he training hard? Is he, you know, in the gym? I don't know. This guy seems like one foot in, one foot out. Whereas Dumas, you know, I know everybody likes to call him dumbass. I'm sorry. He kind of brings it on himself with his attitude. I don't feel too bad saying that. I really don't like to say negative stuff about fighters from the couch. But... This guy doesn't have the greatest fight IQ. He does make a lot of dumb mistakes. Um, he is kind of green. I mean, in his last fight, it was like, 
Yeah, he won, but Cody Brundage came in on short notice, just pulling guillotines. He's getting on top. It's an ugly fight. Josh Fremd was able to finish him. I mean, I can't lay minus 170, but if I was going to do anything, I'd go with the underdog. I'd probably take a Zaytar or a Zaytar by knockout. Um, I'll pick Dumas, but I think a Zaytar is definitely live. I think the knockout is live, but 37, you know, coming off the couch. I mean, not off the couch, but... <clears throat> I just don't think, I don't know, is he in the gym throughout these two and a half years he's been off? I, I don't know, but I'm going to take Dumas. I'm going to take Dumas to catch him in the second round after Zaytar. Probably going to have a pretty good first round. He could catch Dumas and knock him out. I'm going to be looking at some props for Zaytar by knockout, a Zaytar knockout first round. But if you gun to my head, I got to pick a winner. I'll take Dumas to survive the first and catch him in the second. So give me Dumas by knockout. Let's move on. That's no bet for me. Next up, we got Javid Basra taking on Victor Henry. Basra, a huge favorite. And man, I like this guy. And then, like, he's good everywhere. He's got good ground and pound, um, good grappling in general. His striking's good. Both the Basra brothers can strike. They got power. I get it. And he's hyped up. He's eight years younger. Victor Henry, you never know which one you're going to get, man. I mean, yeah, it was a split decision. But Tony Gravely, that, that's no. That's no easy win. So that was a solid win. And to beat Honey Barcelos as like a 4-1 to dog. I mean, Barcelos, I'm super high on him. I know he hasn't been looking great lately, but that was a great win. But then he followed it up by doing nothing against a Sun Tzu. And I know a Sun Tzu, a veteran, he knows how to just lull these dudes into like a low volume, little sparring match. But man, it was kind of disappointing to see. I thought the guy was going to go, you know, have, have a little bit of a run left in him, but... You know, Bantamweight is obviously super tough, and to think neither of these guys are even ranked. I mean, Victor Henry plus 325, though. I mean, Henry, I've seen him up at plus 400 in, on, on some books. I mean, uh, plus 400 currently on DraftKings. I mean, plus 380 on, on a couple books. Uh, plus three, 370. I'm really tempted to lay that, man. I, I really like Basra. I think he's good everywhere. I think he's a, a legitimate prospect. Training at Extreme Couture, only 28. But minus 400, I mean, Jesus Christ. I Actually, minus 535 on DraftKings. Something in me is really just screaming at myself to bet plus 400 Victor Henry. And that line is active right now. And I mean, I might, before the day ends, bet that. I'll let you guys know. It's tempting. I think Victor Henry's volume can give him problems. I think Bostrot's got the power. I think he'll land the more significant strikes. But... When Victor Henry's looking good, when he's going, I know he's 36 and, you know, he's had some bad performances, but, you know, he's beat people better than Basra, in my opinion. I think Barcelos at his best is a better, more complete fighter in the year 2020 when he fought him than Basra is in 23 here. Or what was it, 21 maybe Henry beat him. Uh, that was an impressive win. If that Henry comes out here, he could put the hen the volume on him and uh, he could win this fight by decision. So I'm going to be looking at plus 400. Henry, I'm going to be looking at Henry by decision because he's not really a finisher and I don't see him finishing Basra. But I'll take Basra. I'll take him to win probably by decision. Henry's pretty tough. I'll take him to win by decision based on just landing the bigger, more powerful shots. But I'm going to be eyeing those underdog lines on Henry. Let's move on to the next fight. Next up, we got Muhammad Yahya taking on Trevor Peak. When I first saw this fight, I was like, okay, um... You know, a guy f from there uh, in Abu Dhabi, or at least uh, UAE, um, you know, this is probably a guy who's going to take Trevor down and, and, you know, ground and pound him or submit him, right? But then I go through and watch his fights, because I got to admit, I had never seen Yaya fight. And at first, I was like, wait, honey, Yaya? Oh, wait, no, 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 that that, that wouldn't make sense. But uh, definitely no honey, Yaya. I mean, uh, he's a striker. Um, you know, uh, grappling doesn't look great. He goes in there and strikes. Um, his striking's not bad, uh, but you look at some of the people he's fighting, and it's just like I watched a couple of his fights, and I mean five and three, seven and four, seven and two, and even this guy, he's, he's okay. Um, five and two again, one and zero. Oh. I mean, lost to a three and zero oh guy, Gavin Hughes and Bellator. I mean, he he's okay. He, uh, Grappling, I mean, I think this fight's going to play out on the feet. I got to give the the striking, 
you know, I mean, well, the striking's pretty close, technique-wise. Trevor Peak is, he don't look like the most techno guy, but like my boy Chael P says, a good strike is one that lands. And I will say, Trevor Peak's got the power advantage. He's probably got the finishing upside. Um, man, I I think Peak is the live dog, man. I, I, well, he's not a dog anymore. That's the thing, is people jumped on it. I, I saw some people get it at plus 140. I was able to sneak in there. I can't believe I'm betting Trevor Peak. No knock. I mean, I love the guy. He's freaking fun as hell. But when I saw, once I got the tape in, it was too late to get the like plus 150, plus 140 that I that I saw some people get. But I, I was able to snag him at plus 120. Um, I think he's still like plus 105 on some books. Uh, oh, wow. No. No. Is this? Yeah, I guess it is. You, oh man, seems like people are on it. Uh, I mean, I still think they're, I, I don't know, minus 140, you were starting to get to where I would place it. I think Trevor Peak should be like minus 150, minus 160 at the highest. So if it gets higher than that, probably lay off. But to get close to even money and or even plus 120 like I was able to get, I'm happy with this bet. Do, do I love betting Trevor Peak when he's not a big underdog? Not really. I mean, but I just feel like Muhammad Yaya is super hittable. I think I'm surprised that, you know, I think he's on this card because he's from the UAE. I know everybody's going to be like, oh, well, they're bringing Peak in to lose. I get that. But I think these people, this late money is, I, I got to side with them. I think they're seeing what I'm seeing. I think they're seeing that Peak has the more finishing upside. I think Yaya is there to be hit. And I think Peak is going to knock him out in that first round. Now, give me Trevor Peak first round knockout. I think he's going to catch Yaya. I don't think this guy's that good. I don't think he's fought anybody good. I think Pete can catch him. I don't think his defense is good enough to stop it. I think Pete's going to come through and make this a dog fight, and he's just too much of a dog. junk Junkyard dog, Trevor Peak. Shit-eating wild man. First-round knockout, Trevor Peak. Now, let's move on to... Oh, wait, yeah, this is actually the, <laughs> the featured prelim, right? We got Tim Elliott versus Muhammad Makayev. Um, this is a good fight, man. Makayev is getting built. He's 5-1. to one. I think, look, I'm just going to spoiler alert. I think Tim Elliott is a live dog. Plus 370. I mean, you look at the guy Makayev's beating. I mean, he went to freaking tooth and nail. Almost got finished by Jafael Fiala. Who's solid, but who's he fought? Malcolm Gordon. I mean, yeah, he finished him, but that wasn't dominant not like what you would think Malcolm Gordon no disrespect I think he's one of the worst flyweight fighters in the division in the UFC he might be one of the worst fighters in the UFC period outside of the heavyweight division he's not very good and the fact that he wasn't able to just go in there and finish him I mean Charles Johnson's tough but like these fights like nothing about the, I mean the Cody Durden win is probably his best win I mean, Fialo's good, but we haven't even seen enough to deem that a really good win yet. Tim Elliott, I get it. He's 19 and 12. He's been finished like eight times. But the guy has fought good guys. I mean, it wasn't too long ago. He upset Tagir Lumbekov. I get there was a bunch of fouls in the fight. But beat Victor Altamirano. Altamirano. Um, lost the decision of Mateus Nikolai. That dude's a beast. He might be fighting for a title here in a couple of years. I mean, Brandon Roy Val, Askar Askarov, Davison Figueredo. I mean, he fights the best of the best. Makayev could find, could beat him. I, I will pick Makayev by sub. But I'm looking at this Tim Elliott line, man. Some of these lines on this card, man, it might end up being an underdog night for me. Um, I've been making money betting a, a more underdogs than usual lately. And this is an underdog. You either got to go. You're either taking some stabs on some underdogs or you're playing parlays. And you know I haven't been playing as many parlays lately. Um, Tim Elliott, I think, is live, man. I do think, you know, Makayev should win. I think he, I mean, you know, he's he's 13 years younger. He's going to have, you know, the striking advantage. But Tim Elliott's awkward on the feet. And he's awkward on the ground. He's just awkward in general. I'm going to go Makayev, but I do think Tim Elliott's live. Um, I won't be betting 5-1 to one, Muhammad Makayev. No. Next up, though, we got Saeed Nurmagomedov taking on Muin Gafarov. Um, honestly, again, another guy I had never heard of until I watched. I will say, Kaizen MMA, that's a, uh, 
It's a local gym. I know a bunch of guys that train out of there. Um, they're legit. Um, kind of cool to see them on there, even though we've, you know, some of my teammates have fought some of their teammates, but still, you know, cool to see. He's legit, man. This guy's legit. He, he ain't no pushover, man. Uh, I know he's going out to the UAE. They're, they're, they're trying to build Saeed, give him a bounce back fight. This ain't no pushover fight, man. Uh, this dude's got hands. He's got power. He's got plenty of finishes. His grappling's not bad. I do think Saeed's the more slick striker. I think he's got some speed advantage. I do think, um, you know, the front chokes are nasty. I could see him rocking club and sub over at Gafarov. Overall, I do think I'm going to lean Saeed to take this one by decision. I won't be betting on this fight at all, though. This is going to be a pass for me because uh, I pick Saeed, but... Um, I mean, at least he's not minus 400 like a lot of the people on this card. But, you know, I, I think he's right about where he should be. Minus 200, I think, is a solid line for him. I think he should win. I think his volume on the feet, he's just got to avoid the big shots. Um, but if he does that, I think I'm going to take him Nurmagomedov by decision. Let's move on to the next fight. That'll be a no bet on that one for me. And again, I'm going to make this one short and sweet. This one is a no bet for me as well. We got Is Ikram Aleskarov taking on Worley Alves. Ikram, you know, mostly known for his fight against Hamzat. It's his one loss. Um, he was knocked out in the first round, but somehow people use that to, like, say he's really good because um, he's tough to take down or maybe two. I think it was literally, like, one. But the guy is good. I mean, he's good. He knocked out Phil Hawes in the last fight. But again, like, Phil Hawes, I'm sorry. I actually like Phil Hawes, but... Doesn't mean a whole lot in the year 2023. <sighs> Minus 400 is just wild. I mean, I get it. Worley Alves, not a great gas tank. Just lost a split to Nicholas Dalby. Was finished by Jeremiah Wells. I mean, you know, he's been on a tough run. He's not been looking great. I mean, even though he's only 32, it seems like he just has been on a downswing. Um, his gas tank's never been good. I don't think he's going to get any better. I pretty much think it's first round finish for Worley Alves or bust. I'll take a look at the props because I do think this line's a little wide. But maybe if it's like plus 600 uh, by knockout or, you know, then you got to worry about him landing a guillotine. But I want to take a look at some of these some of these lines. But uh, overall, I got to go Ikram. I got to go Ikram. Probably second round TKO. Um, but, you know, the guillotine's live. The first round knockout's live. Overall, though, I got to go Ikram. Let's move on to the next fight. We got Magomed Ankalaev taking on Johnny Walker. Ankalaev, minus 350 about. Um, you you know how this fight is. I mean, it's pretty easy to break this one down. Ankalaev hasn't beat absolutely everywhere, technique-wise. But Johnny Walker, the more explosive, athletic guy on the feet. Um, just ridiculously athletic and explosive. Huge 6'6", 82-inch reach. I want to see old Johnny Walker, man. I think old Johnny Walker, if he gets in here and just says, fuck it, I'm not going to beat this guy skill for skill. I'm not going to win this fight by decision. He wins this fight by going in there and knocking his ass out in the first round. Maybe first two minutes of the second round. If seven minutes passes in this fight, he's probably lost. Unless he's knocked Uncle Iav down, you know, in both rounds. Um, Uncle Iav should be able to get the takedowns in. It's just he doesn't wrestle a lot. He doesn't use it a ton. Maybe he's got, you know, maybe he's still scared... After that Paul Craig sub, but, you know, uh, he doesn't, he, he likes to stay on the feet a lot, and, and I don't think that's a good decision against Johnny Walker, who's, yeah, I get it, everybody likes to poke fun, and he's lost seven fights now, and everybody likes to just write him off. I get it. Me, too, a little bit. That being said, man, on the feet, especially in that first round, he's live. He could catch Uncle Live. We've seen Uncle Live get hit. We saw Tiago Santos drop him. Um... And I don't think Uncle Hive can just hold Walker against the cage or something. Walker's strong as hell and he's huge. Um, I think Uncle Hive, if he has trouble getting that takedown or if he doesn't commit to it in that first round, I mean, I think Walker could clip him. So I'm, I'm going to pick Uncle Hive. I'm going to pick Uncle Hive to win by decision. That's, he's just more of a decision guy. Bounce back. But, you know, coming off that tough draw, he's fighting one of the most explosive guys in the UFC. I think Johnny Walker could knock him out in that first round. I'll take a look at Johnny Walker by KO. Johnny Walker first round KO. But I am going to pick Ankalaev. I'm going to pick him by decision. 
Um, no bet yet. I mean, props aren't out yet. I'd have to bet a prop. I ain't betting minus 350 on Kalayev. I don't even think I could parlay that. I mean, it'll be a little tempting because I do feel like he's got him skill for skill everywhere. But overall, I just can't. It's a little too steep for me. Next up, we got Kamaru Usman taking on Hamza Shemaev. Shout out to Kamaru Usman, the Nigerian nightmare. Coming off the back-to-back loss to Leon Edwards. He dominated Leon in that second fight, I should say. But, uh, you know, obviously got head kicked right in the fifth. And in that last fight, man, it was not a great showing. I, I don't know if he was he came back too quick. Uh, I don't know if it was coming back too quick and against Leon. I don't know what it was. But he didn't look the same, man. He wasn't. His wrestling didn't look the same. Um, he looked slow. He looked a little stiffer than normal. And he's coming up in weight. He's flying to Abu Dhabi in less than two weeks' notice. He's taking on a, a guy who is going to be a rare time where Usman's probably going to be outstrengthed, most likely. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing this fight. Shamayev should win. I get it. He's, um, you know, he's got a lot of advantages in his book. Short notice. I mean, Usman's got to fly to him. He's coming up in weight. You would have liked to see him be able to have some time to build his. You know, he's plenty big for middleweight, but we're going to talk about it in the main event too. But, you know, you want to build your body to get into that upper weight class. Um, and, you know, Hamzat's got that, the, the confidence right now. Obviously, the Gilbert Burns fight, you know, you can do the MMA math. Usman dominated him besides one punch, and Hamzat went tooth and nail with him. I get all that, but... If this was full camp, if this was two years ago when Usman had the belt, I would pick Usman all day against Shamayev. And I don't care how that sounds. If this was before the Leon fights, and you, I was willing to die on that hill, and you would have gave him Hamza the, the, the title fight, I think Usman knocks him out. But you give him short notice, flying to Abu Dhabi, short notice, going up and wait, uh, short notice, coming off two losses, which is just demoralizing. You're starting to think... Is Usman doing this for a paycheck? There's all these factors. It's enough to push me to the other side. I am going to go Hamzat. I'm going to say Hamzat. I'm actually going to go by knockout. I think the way Hamzat fights, someone's almost always going to get finished. Obviously, he went to decision with Gilbert. Obviously, Usman's been cast iron besides that one head kick from Leon. But I don't like the short notice, up away class, flying to him. Hamza, is he going to even have to make weight in the UAE? <laughs> Giggity, is he even gonna, is he going to be allowed to use an IV? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I got to go Hamza. I'm going to say Hamza. Man, you know what really sucks is I, I just feel like Hamza's going to finish him, man. I think the first round finish is possible just because Hamza, the way he fights. I'm really pulling for Usman. I hope he's been preparing for this low key a potential step in uh, I hope he was already planning to go into middleweight because that would be smart after the two losses maybe he was planning to go to middleweight he was building his body already he was staying I know he's staying in shape but they're staying in shape and then they're staying and fly to Abu Dhabi in 12 days shape for for a fight against Hamza you gotta kind of side with Hamza when he has all the the intangibles on his side that being said man this is a guy who you know I mean, one of the greatest welterweights of all time. I don't want to catch, count Usman out. I'm praying Usman gets it done. Nothing against Hamza. I just love a good underdog story. Give me Hamza Shemaev, TKO. I'm going to say third round. I'm going to say second round, TKO. Um, We'll see if he can get Usman down or if he can catch him on the feet. The striking is going to be really interesting. I'm really going off the intangibles in this fight. And speaking of that, we're going to get right into the main event. We got Islam Makhachev taking on Alexander Volkanovsky. Again, let me know how many significant strikes you think are going to be landed between these two in the main event. Let me know in the comments if you want to win a copy of UFC 5. Just like last week, shout out the monkey god. Main event, Islam Makhachev, 24-1, his one loss being that crazy knockout when he first came to the UFC. Volkanovsky, one of his two losses to Islam and one of his only other loss way back you know, Corey Nelson had kicked him um, forever ago. This is pound for pound one and two in my eyes, um, only because, you know, Alex came up and all the intangibles in the first fight showing that these are the best fighters in the world. I mean, a lot of people will say John Jones. I'm, pound for pound, 
I just think these are the two best right now in the year 2023. That being said, man, the first fight was so close. It was a game of inches. And now, just like the co-main, you're giving all the intangibles to Islam. Now, instead of going to Australia, you're going to Abu Dhabi. And you're not only going to Abu Dhabi, but you're going there on 10 days notice, 9 days notice. I know he didn't even fly out there immediately. So, jet lag. It's a like an 18-hour flight. You're going short notice. You're going up a weight class. Last time, you had like months and months to build your body up. This time, you've got less than two weeks. He thought he... It's not like, like Usman, maybe he was sitting out. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm going to do lightweight next. No, the plan was to fight Topuria early next year. Not only that, this man just had surgery. He just had elbow surgery like two weeks ago. Three, maybe it was three weeks ago. This guy, he at least had to go a little bit of time in no training. So... I'm sure his cardio is still going to be great, better than most, but is it going to be Alexander Volkanovsky beating up Islam in the fifth round good? Is it going to be good enough to use that as a weapon against somebody who also has good cardio? This is a game of inches, and you're giving the intangibles to somebody who is arguably one or two best fighters in the world. I got to go Islam, unfortunately. I'm, I'm rooting for Alex. Again, I don't have nothing against Islam. I don't have nothing against Hamza. But I love a good underdog story. Taking the fight on short notice to fight one of the baddest dudes in the world. If you can get it done, I honestly think if Volk pulls this fight off, he might be, I mean, dude, he's in the go conversation, bro. Not only the short notice, the up a weight class, the right after surgery, thinking he was fighting a weight class below, coming in here like four months earlier, up a weight class, but against Islam. You could say the best fighter in the world. He'd be in the go conversation if he pulls this off, and we'll see the trilogy. Unfortunately, I got to lean Islam. But I like that the line's a little closer. I think it's right where it should be. I think he should be a little bit over 2-1, to one, given the intangibles. If you would have gave me full camp Alex, I'm not going to lie. I pick Alex. I pick Alex if this is full camp, even in Abu Dhabi and all that. But you got to lay Abu Dhabi. Short notice, up away class. You know, I'm sure he's working with Craig Jones. He's working on escaping the back because if Islam gets his back, typically in the last fight, it was the end of the round. I'm sure he's working on that. I hope he comes out more aggressive. He knows he can stuff the takedowns. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but he can stuff them. He can get back up if taken down as long as he doesn't give up his back. So now, just absolutely under no circumstances can you give up your back and you got to come out more aggressive, man, especially considering we don't know what that fifth round is going to look like for your gas tank like it typically is. I'm sure he'll be all right. I don't think he's going to completely gas out, but against a guy who also has good cardio, is he going to be able to be, have the one who has it better? I don't know. Overall, I got to go Islam, but man, Alex, one of my favorite fighters at this point, absolute BMF for taking this fight. I mean, him and Usman, but you know, this is a crazy fight. I'm going to go Islam. I'm going to go Islam by decision. These are two of the best fighters in the world. I think one and two. Um, it's a shame it has to be under these circumstances, but hey, it makes for a great story, especially if Alex can't pull it off. So one real quick, I'm going to go down my fight, my picks. I'm going to take Islam by decision. Hamzat, TKO. Ankalaev, decision. Ikram, TKO. Uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov, decision. Muhammad Makayev, decision. Trevor Peak, knockout. Javid Bashra, decision. Sadiq, or uh, Cedric Dumas, um, by knockout. Mike Breeden, decision. Um, Nathaniel Wood, decision. Victoria Dudikova, decision. And Magomedov, I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him by knockout, ground and pound. Those are my picks. Um, as far as bets, I did take Breeden already at plus 320. Other than that, I'm looking at maybe Frey plus 400. Maybe Wood by decision once that prop drops, depending on what it is. I'm going to be eyeing a Zaytar. I'm seeing him around plus 170 now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eye that. I'm going to eye Victor Henry uh, plus 400 or maybe by decision. Or maybe a Zaytar by knockout, knockout first round. Um, I, did, um, I did lay a little something on Trevor Peak. Plus 120. Um, uh, let's see where... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean... 
this line is going down. I mean, pretty much get on it now if you plan on getting it. I still think there's a little value. Tim Elliott plus 380, that's not going away yet. So I got a little time to, to decide on that, but I am eyeing it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm thinking about betting-wise. Make sure you put in the comments, significant strikes for the main event. Good luck. Hope you win UFC 5. And I'm still giving away nine copies. Well, eight after this one. I appreciate you guys. My Twitch, my YouTube, well, <laughs> I almost said YouTube. My Twitch, my TikTok, my Twitter, all that's going to be in the caption below. I appreciate you guys. And um, good luck. Make some money. Win UFC 5. Enjoy the fights. They're early. Don't miss them. It's going to be fun. Do not miss this card. It's going to be some bangers. Can't wait. I know this video went a little longer than I wanted, but it's a big pay-per-view. I had to. I had to break it down. Do its justice. I will catch y'all next week. Enjoy the fights. Peace.